video here with section 1.1. Um, we're going to be taking a look at a lot more uh, naming figures and just kind of breaking down diagrams. So if this is the sort of thing that you've really felt like you got down in the first cycle, feel free to try these on your own and then you can just kind of see how they went for you. Okay? Without further ado, let's dive in. So we're going to be using this diagram for numbers 1 through 4. Um, and it says to give two other names for line CD. And we know that's line CD because there are arrowheads on either end of that symbol, right? So we're talking about CD and the line passing through them. So let's recap on what this dotted section means. One more time, that just indicates that it's actually behind something. Something's kind of covering up our view of what we see here. Well, that would indicate that the line itself is like underneath this shaded region, the plane with, uh, with a little M in the corner, right? Plane M, as they're talking about in number two. So what that tells us is if it passes underneath there, then this must be the point of intersection. And then because, of course, planes are flat surfaces, they don't, they don't have curves to them, uh, we know that moving in the direction of D for the rest of the, the line, it would have to be above the plane, right? So give two other names for line CD. Well, the obvious one we had talked about uh, prior was just the ability to reverse those for lines and segments, okay? Now that's not true of arrays because array with array direction makes quite a difference. But that's, that was one easy way to do it. Another one is just to look for any letter next to one of the arrowheads, okay? That's not indicating a point, so we would refer to this also as just plain M, okay? So there's your two other names here. Next up it says, give another name for plain M, okay? I'm sorry, <laughs> up above that was supposed to be line. I just realized, I think I'm mentally jumping ahead. So that would be line M, lowercase m. And now we're talking about plain capital M, this large shaded region, okay? So give another name for plain M. We said you could use one of the, the letters in the corner because that's referring to the whole plane. But we also said that you could use three non-collinear points. And that means that all three of them cannot be on the same line. You could pick two that are on the same line, for instance, C and B which are also on the plane, so long as we would choose E, which is non-collinear, right? So, for instance, we could say ECB is another name, way to name plane M. Alternatively, you could go ACE, right? And, of course, you could re reverse any of these or rewrite them. ECA, uh, CEA, there are lots of ways to do this, okay? So there's just two quick examples. Um, next up, name three points that are collinear. That means all three lie on the same line. And in this case, we see this line here clearly has three points marked. So let's go with A, C, and B. Then name a fourth point that is not collinear with these three points. So, so long as it's not on that, that line, we're good. Um, again, keep in mind capital M and lowercase m are not points, though. So we're really only left with E or D, E or D as our two main options, okay? So either one of those would not be collinear with those three. Next up on number four, name a point that is not coplanar, not together on a plane with points A, C, and E. Okay. Well, A, C, and E, we said above, that's actually plane M, right? So if it's non-coplanar, I can't pick E, B, C, or A because all four of those are on this plane. Well, that only leaves us with one point that was not on the plane, right? Point D. Okay. So again, those are the basics of naming structure for some of these, uh, these first diagrams we're looking at, okay? Let's look at five through eight. Again, feel free to try these and then you can kind of see how they went just by uh, fast forwarding the video, okay? What is another name for line PQ? Well, we could go with line QP. We could call it line J or because T is denoting this intersection, it actually is talking about a point there, the point of intersection. So we could even call it line PT or line QT. All of those represent the same straight line. So I'll just go ahead and go line TQ. All right, what is another name for line RS? Well, the same kind of thing can happen here, okay? I could pick RT, TS. They all are part of the same line. Or a really easy method would just be line K. After all, it's next to one of our arrowheads. Okay, number seven, name all rays with end point T. Now, even though this looks like, you know, it has to stop there because it's an end, like a lot of my students actually think it's easier to think of this like a beginning point, okay? So you're starting at T and moving in other directions. So from T, you'll notice we can continue up, up and left, down, or down and right, right? 
So which of these rays are opposite rays? We'll answer here in a second. Let's first off name all four of those. We're going to have ray TR, ray TP, ray TQ, and finally ray TS. Okay? So those are our four rays with endpoint T. So which are opposite rays? So all of them begin at the same endpoint, which is great, but they need to go quite literally opposite directions. Think like north and south. They're east and west or up and down. Okay? For instance, ray TQ and ray TS are not opposite directions. Both are generally downwards. Even ray TP and TS are not opposite directions because while this one is straight down, that one's up and to the left. Right? So think about it almost like a half rotation. Half of a circle will get you around to its opposite. So in this case, TR and TS would work together. We'll just kind of link those two. And TP and TQ would also work together. Okay? So either one of those sets would work just fine. So there are two sets of opposite rays, and these always make a line. Okay? You will always make a line with that. All right, number eight. On the diagram, we're going to draw planes M and N that intersect at line K. Now, this, this is kind of a tough one because you guys don't have too much experience drawing the planes. Um, keep in mind, to draw a plane, we'll just use the, the parallelogram shape. And even though it goes on forever, hopefully it, it's helping you guys sort of envision that flat surface. Okay? Well, so if I want them to intersect at line K, that means that both of them need to meet at line K. So for instance, I could have the tops meet at R. Kind of an easy way to do this would be to draw an X. I could have the bottoms meet at S. Now, for the sake of our 3D drawings, I'm just going to extend the bottom part of my X. And now if I connect those upwards, hopefully we're all seeing how these can all begin to connect, right? And because this section would be behind what we can actually see, maybe we'll just do some dotted pieces there, okay? So obviously these two flat surfaces here are meeting on this line, line K. Kind of tricky to draw, isn't it? Well, they said draw planes M and N, and that means that I need to make sure to label these. Maybe I'll call this one M in the upper right, and then this one could be N in the upper left, okay? So we now have our two planes and all the visuals there, okay? All right, finally, we're just going to sketch the following figures. So once again, try these on your own and just see how they went for you. We've got segment AB, and this says ray BC. Well, that means that it's going to have to continue through point C, beginning at point B. Or in this case, we just have a segment that stops at A and B, right? So do your best to draw a straight segment. Go ahead and put your end points, and let's refer to that as A and B. Now, ray BC can really go in any direction, okay? You could continue along that sort of linear path here. You could actually go the opposite way and continue right on past A, so long as there is a point there to draw a ray to. So lots of options here. It doesn't really matter. There's not a right or a wrong as long as they start at B, okay? Passes through C. Now you have it, segment AB and ray BC. Finally, we're going to draw line K in play, plane M. So once again, let's draw that sort of parallelogram that we're getting used to. That is our plane. Put an M in the corner. And finally, line K just might, has to exist entirely on it. So just put a little K right next to the arrowhead. All right, so that'll sum it up. Again, I just want to make sure that we're getting all this naming and sort of the diagram creation and drawing down uh, because you guys will be quizzed on that before too long, okay? If you have any questions, please let me know. And, uh, yeah, just reach out via email or message. Good luck on your homework, guys.